Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to another Ozone 7 tutorial. Today we're checking out the Imager module, which is by far my favorite plugin for imaging, not just for widening a master, but also you can use it on mono recordings to mimic stereo width. So that's really cool as well. So first I'll give you a rundown of the controls. I'll try it out on two songs on the entire mix, and then I'll try it out on some individual mono sources. So much like the Exciter plugin and other multiband plugins in Ozone, the Imager has four separate bands. Each one can be soloed or disabled. And you can also learn a suggested crossover for each band. I personally don't want my high frequencies to be this narrow up here, so I'm going to manually adjust the mid band to come down to 2K, and I'm going to widen up the range of my upper band. The four sliders down here control the stereo width of each band. If you pull it up, the band will get wider, and as you pull it down, the band will get narrower. Typically what I do is I widen the high frequencies, I widen the mid-low frequencies, and I also widen the mid-high frequencies, but just a bit. And the reason why I do that is because that's where a lot of the vocal energy is, and I don't want the vocals to lose their focus. And I usually narrow the lows as well, um, just to focus the bass up a bit. On the right is a vector scope that you can view in three different ways. Polar sample, polar level, or lissage or lissagis. All three of these graphs show us the in-phase material in comparison to the out-of-phase or anti-phase material. I'll pull up all four bands to the max just to demonstrate this better. With polar sample view, this plots dots per sample. So material within this middle section here is safe material that is in-phase. Outside of these 45 degree lines is material that is out of phase. Polar level is very similar to polar sample, except that it shows us an, a sample average as opposed to individual sample plots. So again, material within the center here is in phase. Material outside of the 45 degree lines is out of phase. Lissajou shows plots per sample like polar sample does, but it's arranged a bit differently. Vertical patterns indicate that channels are similar, and horizontal patterns indicate that channels are different. Material within the left and right boxes indicates out-of-phase material. Now, one would naturally think that you would want no anti-phase material whatsoever. You want everything to be perfectly in phase. Well, the only thing that's going to hold true to that is an actual mono recording with one mic. We can mimic that here by pulling all the bands down to negative uh, 100 here, and basically making each band mono, or just by clicking on the mono button here. So this just mimics um, a mono recording, and you can test your mono compatibility. Now, I don't really want to go on a big rant about mono compatibility, um, but your mixes shouldn't have so much anti-phase material that when you check it in mono that you lose whole frequency ranges and in instruments because of phase cancellation. So in short, there's a balance between creating a cool, wide, modern stereo image but still making sure that your mix is mostly mono compatible and phase coherent. So how do we do that? Well, we use a correlation meter. You'll see this thing bouncing around as you play the song. As you add width to each band, you need to watch the correlation meter as well to make sure that you're not going below zero. Keeping this dot between zero and plus one means that you have an acceptable amount of phase in your song. If you widen the image too much, you'll see this start to dip down below zero, and that means you have too much anti-phase material, and your song makes sound cool in stereo, but in mono, you'll start to hear things getting canceled out. Just a side note, you'll find that phase issues with the correlation meter are very noticeable with reverbs and other time-based effects. So for instance, when I play the song, I'm mostly in phase. The dot is in between zero and plus one. But when I stop the song, you'll notice that the delay and reverb are out of phase. But again, the overall song is within spec. This means that when the song is in mono, I might lose a lot of those time-based effects. Um, and I could go back and choose a different reverb setting that's not so wide or just live with it. It's a call you have to make. The good news is that most people are listening to music on stereo systems, in the car, on headphones, or whatever, so it's not a problem most of the time, but if the song is being played on a summed mono portable speaker, for instance, 
or in a club that still plays music sum to mono, this can be a problem. All right, so I'll play a bit of the track and I'll bypass the plugin just so you can hear the before and after. So we're giving the song just subtle width, not really drastic uh, width. And it's going to be more noticeable on headphones than it is on speakers. All right, let's try this out on another track. This one's a heavy metal track with some really thick guitars. Yeah, you can really hear how it uh, widens up, especially the guitars, and almost breaks them apart a little bit, so they're not clashing too much. Um, one of the things you do have to keep in mind, though, is, again, the more dense the material, and when you spread dense material, it's going to more or less make your mono compa uh, compatibility not as uh, good anymore. So you heard there, when I converted to mono, the two guitars on the far left and far right sounded like they were clashing with each other quite a bit and canceling each other out a bit. All right, so the last thing I want to show you is the stereoize feature in the imager. It's a really cool uh, feature that allows you to take mono material and essentially give it a stereo width and mimic stereo width. So I'm going to turn this off for now. Um, I'm working with a track here where we've got some organ and some electric keys here, our electric piano, and I'm assuming these were recorded uh, just from a single line out from the instrument. Um, so they're completely mono, they're mono channels in Logic. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this organ and this electric piano, and we're going to give it a little bit more width and give it um, just a thicker, wider sound as opposed to the narrow uh, mono line uh, signal that was taken from the instrument. So this is what the organ sounds like um, with, with, without the imager on it. And you can see when I move the uh, sliders around here for stereo width, it does nothing um, because we're working with a mono signal. So you can't just image a mono signal like that. So if you turn on the stereoized feature and then start playing with these sliders, you'll start to hear a difference. So again, just like we did before, you have to sort of watch the anti-phase material, make sure not, that you're not doing this too much, and also watch your correlation meter and make sure that it's staying between zero and plus one. All right, let's try this out on the electric piano now. This is what it sounds like without the imager on. All right, let's try to add some stereo width by turning on the stereoize function, and we'll pull up some of these width bands and see what we can come up with.
And there you go. That's the stereoized feature in the imager in Isotope Ozone 7. Um, just a quick note on this. I've actually used it on vocals before just to take a vocal that was just that I didn't want to sound center and I didn't have any doubled vocals or anything like that to simulate uh, width. Um, so I've put it on vocals and just done a very slight spread on the vocals um, just again to make them sound a little bit more diffuse and wide. Uh, but again, I find myself mostly using it on mono instruments where I don't have a doubled instrument and I just want that instrument to, to have a little bit of stereo width or to mimic maybe the sound of using two mics to record it or two lines to record it as opposed to one. All right, guys, so that is the Isotope Ozone 7 Imager plugin. It's my all-time favorite imaging plugin for mastering and for mixing. Um, if you'd like to follow along with me and practice mixing, the multi-track session setting fire that I used in the beginning of this video is available for purchase and download. I'll leave a link to it in the video description below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.